Police officers think they are always right and often consider themselves above the law. However, sometimes they end up getting owned by someone who is a few pay grades over them. Just like this female officer who thought she was too entitled to be held accountable for her action. On October 26, 2019, a Las Cruces police officer was dispatched after a witness observed a woman sleeping inside her car. The witness claimed that the woman was driving erratically and might be impaired. Soon, the cops arrived and noticed the woman sleeping comfortably. Las Cruces PD. Can you wake up? Oh. Right now, let 950 know. I mean, let Central know that there is no male. That's right. There is a female passed on the passenger side. Yeah. 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 I'm calling in, but he can hear us. Ma'am, can you get up? I need you to wake up. Who else is with you? Just you? The woman passed out in the car was herself a Las Cruces police detective, Stephanie Carabajal. It seemed like she had a lot to drink, and the officers were not going to leave her alone. Going on for the last 20 minutes. No, I need you to get up. To get up. 950 Central 49. There's going to be no male with this vehicle, just a female passed out. Yeah, turn on the... No, get up now. This car up here? We're not sure. Man. Get out of the vehicle. No, Go ahead and get out of the vehicle for me. No, what? I'm giving you a lot of order to step out of the vehicle. Do it now. In your own lawful order? Step out of the vehicle. Okay, stupid. Right here. Who else is with you? What do you mean who else is with me? Look in the car. Wait, wait right there, ma'am. Wait right there. What are you there. talking about? Wait right there, ma'am. Come here. This is my own lawful order. Ma'am. Ma'am, just, just wait. wait in the car. Wait in the car, please. Wait in the car. That's what I'm asking. Wait in the car. This is bullshit. Look wait. in your own fucking overall. You want to look in my car? Steph, car Steph, no, look in the car. Bullshit. Just have a seat in the car. No, okay, then have a seat in the car. car. Sit in the car. Go ahead. Go ahead. Instead of carrying out field sobriety tests and arresting her for DUI, the officers proceeded to contact New Mexico State Police, urging them to investigate this incident. Meanwhile, Detective Kara Bajal was relaxing in her truck. <laughs> Clutch right here. Oh, we got it. Okay. Uh, right. I'll close the door. Okay. I'm sorry. The first door. As the officers waited for the supervisor to arrive, one of them went over to the witness who had called the cops over to hear what had transpired originally. And I was going like towards, like I was going towards the the movies, like going like on the highway, like on the frontage. Mm -hmm. And I noticed like these people were like honking. I'm like, well, what are they honking at? And I looked to the right because she was like in the. She was like a white younger girl. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And like she looked like that. I know they, like she was asleep? Like yeah, yeah, and so like I freaked out because Was they, there anyone else in the truck with no, her? No. Uh -huh. And she, so I started honking and she had her window rolled down and I was like, Are you okay? She's all Yeah. And then like she went straight. When she said yeah, did she seem fine? No, she didn't. That's why I followed her. Uh -huh. It seemed like the witness had done a great deed of following the drunk detective, else she might have caused some great harm to herself and the people on the road. Seeing her condition, she definitely should not be behind the wheel. And she like turned to make like a U-turn, but she was like swerving. And I was like, you know what? I like she was her. not maintaining her lane? Yeah. I was like, I better call the cops in mm -hmm. case she is intoxicated or... So you suspect that she was yeah. driving drunk? And I, yeah, because I'm, I'm afraid that, you know, she's going to end up killing herself, she's going to kill somebody else, and I'm going to be guilty for it. Mm -hmm. So she got off the freeway, on the highway, she went this way, and that's when I called 911, and I was following... 
following her and then she's like slowed down but she's going 10 miles per hour on the right lane and people were, how far was she going 10 uh, miles an hour I guess like how long like, when i was like going that much she like noticed me again that i was following her or what and that's when she pulled and then she stopped right there and she got out of her vehicle and i asked her again are you okay she's like, yeah. So, so she went from the drivers to the yeah, passenger seat. Did passenger. she just scoot over inside, or did she no, get out she of the got vehicle? Out of the vehicle. Okay. Yeah. What happened when she got out? The officers kept waiting for a supervisor to show up from the New Mexico State Police. However, the officers did have a point, as they didn't want any bias involved in the investigation. After 30 minutes of waiting, Deputy Chief Paul Brock arrived on the scene and confronted Detective Carabajal. The deputy talked with the detective and eventually asked her to get off her vehicle. It was time that she did some field sobriety tests. However, surprisingly, the detective refused to conduct the field sobriety tests, leaving the deputy with no choice but to proceed with the arrest. Despite being clearly intoxicated, she kept on arguing with the officers that she was just sitting on the passenger side of the car. However, the witness claimed that she just exchanged seats minutes before the cops arrived. Um, so you guys want to sit here and talk to me like I'm... What, what, what questions do you have? We're gonna, we're gonna play games, okay? No, what questions do you have? I'm no, I don't have questions. questions. So, you're gonna arrest me for whatever you want. You're already playing the arrest. As in the passenger seat of a fucking car, and you're gonna arrest me for DWI. Got it. Passenger seat of DWI. Got it. Police officers also took no heed to her cries and proceeded with the arrest. She was eventually taken to the police station where she was charged with aggravated driving while under the influence of an intoxicating liquor or drug and one count of blocking traffic. In December 2019, the Las Cruces Police Department fired Carabajal and suspended her license in 2021. However, the charges against her were dropped as the judge claimed that her rights to a quick trial were violated. Don't you touch me! Don't you touch me! Don't you touch me! Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
You have a fault problem? On the 9th of October, 2023, a drunk driver crashed his car into multiple cars. Shortly after, several police officers arrived and were conducting their investigation when an uninvited police chief showed up. Hey, Ron, just pull that up and put it to the shoulder. Yeah. What Thanks. Is what is it? The RMA. I am not the police, okay? I came here with the ambulance. I want to make sure you're okay. Mm. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know. I'm asking you if he's RMA or not. Oh, yeah, no. What? Yeah. I get that. I'm not saying you aren't. I just want to make sure your head is okay. He's giving them a the problem. He's that we need to be aware of. I can't get any. Can you tell me your first name at least? The officers were surprised to see Chief Leonard Guida pulling over in civil clothes. Shortly after, the chief pulled over an on duty sergeant for a weird reason. Let me work this DWI, okay? Come over here. Chief, I'm on a DWI. Come over here. Chief, I'm on a DWI. Get over here. I'm on a DWI. The chief kept calling the sergeant over who refused, claiming that he had a DWI to work on. However, the chief persisted and even used force only to learn the lesson of a lifetime. Chief, I'm working. I don't have time to argue about a jacket, okay? Don't you touch me. Don't you touch me. Don't you touch me. You have a fault problem? You grab me! Now get out of here! Before you get a problem. Take him out. No, you're gonna go in. Drunk again. Whose keys are these? They're mine. Get out of here. No. Chief, get out of here or you're gonna get locked up. Chief, you're gonna get locked up. You're grabbing me three times to leave me alone. You're obstructing my DWI. Billy, come over here. Let him go. The chief got embarrassed right in front of his juniors, but instead of learning his lesson and walking away, he persisted with his resentful demeanor and pulled over the sergeant once again. That's the first thing. For, put, put, I'm, I'm trying to get away from everybody. Shut up, because you're in trouble now. Stop. No, I'm Please, not in stop. trouble. Stop, I'm not stop, trouble. stop. You're going to be in trouble. Stop, stop, Billy. Billy. Chief, I'm Billy, working at DWI. I'm, I'm listening to you. Okay. Shut up. No. You're in trouble, because this is the first thing. First, first of all, I was about to say to you, you stupid... I was about to say to you, what do you need OEM for? You're, that's, you're embarrassing me in front of the men no, about the jacket. No, 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 no. That's, that's neither here nor there. Okay. That, that's neither here nor there. Now we got a real fucking problem, Billy. Yeah, we do. I know. I we know. do. All right, you're going to have to go inside. No, how about we do no, this? No, 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 how no. we go Billy, inside? Billy, you're going to have to go inside right now with me. Chief Guida had completely lost it, and it was evident that he was intoxicated way above the legal limit. However, he did something incredibly foolish right in the middle of a dangerous traffic stop. And there's been a serious be, collision. Billy, you're not doing anything when I'm on the scene, okay? You should know better than this, my friend. No. Listen you to me. Grab me. No, I said come over line. here. You're out of line. You grab me. Some Billy, video. Billy, Some video. I'm Billy, not going to argue with it. I have a uh, crash Billy, to work. Billy, I have a job Billy, to do. you're okay? relieved. Billy, you're relieved. You're relieved. Oh, no, 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 no. Billy, you have to understand something. You're relieved. Billy, you're relieved. Go in the headquarters and wait for me. Yes, yeah, so I might crash. No, no, Billy. You're relieved. I have Billy. officers here. Billy. Right here. They Billy. could get waffled because my car is Billy. blocking it. Billy, you're relieved. No, Chief. No, Billy. Please, Billy. Don't. You're suspended, Billy. I'm you're suspended? suspended? Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm spending yeah. going home. Yes. The chief ended up suspending the sergeant for no apparent reason. This meant that he was cleared to go home, however. The chief kept on insisting that he follow him to the police station. Come here. I'm going home. You're going, I, no, we you can't talk. I'm suspended. No, no, no. No, no, no I'm no. suspended. I'm you're going, going to home. And you're going to wait for me there. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna suspended. Go you're gonna go I'm going home. Headquarters. You're going to go in the headquarters and wait for me there. Well, let me work my crash. No, no, this no. This is why no, I'm no, here. Billy, you're suspended. All right, if I'm suspended, then I'm not going to wait inside. Nothing more no, to no, say. No, 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 Billy. You have to... You have to me. Thank you. Billy, you're suspended. Okay. All right. Billy. Yes. Okay. Wait for me in there. That's an order. Can you do me a favor? 
Can you put your car where my car is so our officers and first aid don't get run over, yes, please? I got you. I got Thank you. you. The poor sergeant was embarrassed in front of his team, and none of the officers could speak up against the corrupt chief. That's when he pulled over another officer and tried to justify his behavior. See what happened there? Yes, Chief. What, did, what happened? some type of exchange between you and Sergeant Major. Well, we're going to talk about that later. Everybody's got that. Billy, Billy's suspended. You really got this. What do you have here? What do you have? Uh, we're trying to figure that out, Chief. Okay. Oh. Go on, Billy. Oh, the sergeant returned to his vehicle and was trying to get away from the scene. However, the chief was still not done as he once again came to him. This time, the conversation was more personal. Hey, I'm in the there. Door. Yes, you're going to meet me in there. Go and put the door to me right now. There's nowhere to put her. She's going to ruin things. Okay, we'll leave her in there. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm down. I got people on the road. I want to make sure they're safe. I want to run you over, so watch no, out. No, 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 come on. Go ahead. You know I love you. Come on. I know. What? Yeah, what no, the fuck is wrong with you? Stop. Billy, Why would you stop. do that to me? Stop. Billy, stop. <sighs> you got enough problems already. Please. Okay. <laughs> It appeared as if the officers knew each other personally. However, the sergeant drove away, forced to leave his traffic stop. On the other hand, this matter was immediately noticed by the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office. An investigation started into the case, and Chief Guida was placed on administrative leave with pay. Just a day later, the chief announced his retirement, which occurred six months ahead of schedule. Well, if you think this was intense, the next blue on blue moment will leave you stunned. I work here! I work here! You fucking man! Get out of my! On the 31st of May 2013, Officer Robert Dubow from the Bergen County Police Department was conducting a traffic stop on the shoulder of the road. However, as Officer Dubow was in plain clothes, a state trooper from the New Jersey State Police observed this and pulled over behind the traffic stop to approach and confront the officer. The state trooper went over to demand the officer's ID, which he refused to give. The trooper then proceeded to draw his handgun out, intimidating the officer. As expected, the officer didn't like this gesture. I do. I do. Have what? Armed robbery. You got a person. Person. I see what you got. I got a backup. Book. I got a backup. No, book. you're not gonna tell me to leave here. This is my spot right here. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Okay, you'll get it. You'll get it. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. No, no, you don't. Apparently you don't. Eyes front. Why are you looking at me? The state trooper claimed that recently there had been several carjackings during which the suspects impersonated police officers. Therefore, he kept demanding the officer's ID. Shortly after, Sergeant Gabriel Escobar, also in plain clothes, arrived at the scene. Suddenly, the situation escalated and the conversation took a darker turn. Yeah, bullshit. I work here. I work here. I work here. Fuck you, man. Get out of my face. Get out of my face. Get out of here. Get out of here. Don't fuck you. You don't know what's going on out here. 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 You don't know what
The tempers escalated and both the officers went back and forth with each other filled with profanity. Things were about to get even worse as the trooper tried to explain the reason for pulling over. If you're not the uniform, I'm gonna wipe the street with you, bro. You put your gun on me. Fuck the police, scumbag. You got my ID. A police. What the fuck do I look like to you? If I put my gun on you, I'm gonna shoot you. If you put your, if I put my gun on you, I'm gonna shoot you. I do. A police impersonator. Arrested for three of them in the last month. Three of them in unmarked cars. Arrest the police impersonator. So don't come out here fucking rocking a fucking uniform. Bro, you're better than anybody. You know who I am. Really? You know who I, I am. Say, I don't know who you are. You my ID. Arrest the police ID. impersonator with that. It appeared as if the officers didn't like the troopers withdrawing his gun against them. However, eventually, both the sergeant and the officer identified themselves. That's best, bro. Do they have this? Did I see that one? If you just walked up. Afterwards, scumbag! What, did I have my gun out after I saw that? Did I throw you out? Arrest the police impersonator! That's right! Rookie move! It's a rookie move! You got, I work out here! You, you, know you, you know who I am! You know who I am! You know who I am! You see this? You know who I am! Get out of here! You know who I am! Rookie Hey, Sergeant! Just let me get your name real quick. Escobar. Escobar, yeah. what is that? Burton County Sheriff? Burton County PD, very good. Escobar, what's that, bitch? 244. Escobar, 244. Just as it appeared that the tempers had cooled down, the officers were engaged in a verbal dispute once again. And this time, the officer was the aggressor. Wait, take a picture of this. Yeah, Mr. Stump guy. All right. Yeah. You don't know the story, bro. You don't know the story. You got out of the academy. Yeah, all right. You just got out of the academy. You see a uniform that means I got out of the academy. You are because you're acting like a douchebag. Bro, you don't know the story. I just told you the story, and you're still acting like an asshole. What does that mean? I just told you the story. So when you're playing clothes, guys do that. Do we do that to them? Well, listen. When our playing guys are out here working, they let us know. They let us know when our playing guys are out here working. Just out of curiosity, you're working on Route 4, Route 46, you know so? I don't come out to Route 4. Because you're not from here. You don't know shit about here. Where you from, fucking Morrison? Right, because I only got six months on the job. I only got six months on the job. The trooper accepted the fact that he was a Tukey and was only trying to do his job. That's when he went to confront the sergeant who tried to calm him down. Because it's an issue now. Now it's an issue. Now it's an issue. First off, I'm not going to make an issue of it. I work out here. I'm not working out here, all right? Oh, you're not making an issue out here? You're going to be ranting and raving telling me to get the fuck out of here? Did you just do that? I think we just settled this out here. I'm not going to say nothing because you want to pull your boy off. I'm telling you, you I tried to explain this to you. We've had three police impersonators, that best and all. So we're ripping and stripping out here, robbing people. You know what? Carjacking, guns, I guess the whole it. nine yards. Bro, if you don't believe it, I want my detectives to call you. I, I want them to personally call you because I'm a rookie and you don't, I don't know what going on. Just calm down. Now, calm down. Wait. Finally, the matter seemed to be resolved, as the sergeant had understood the reason for the stop. Eventually, the trooper drove away, and the officers continued with the stop. Yeah. Are we okay. getting anywhere yelling at each other? <laughs> not getting anywhere yelling at each other. Nah. All right? So, if that's the case, then, you know what? That's what's up. No, I'm lying, bro. I'm lying. I, I, I come out here, I come what? out here typically and put my gun out on police. Because that's what I do. That's what they teach us. Oh, this one's out of the academy to do. Why do I tell you that? I don't cop a corn gun on him. I have a problem with that. Yeah, no shit. All right? Yeah. But I still tried to explain to you, and it didn't go anywhere. It didn't go anywhere. I'm a rookie six months out of the job. Well, you know what? I want my detectives to call you personally. I'm calling you. I want them to call you personally because, you know what? Apparently, my word's not good enough. So I'm going to leave it as is. 
Soon after this incident, the Bergen County Police Department launched a statement claiming that neither the officers nor the trooper were at fault, as both of them were just doing their duties. However, it was later revealed that both Sergeant Escobar and Officer Dubow received some type of punishment for their behavior. It's just not senior officers who hold these idiot cops accountable, as this cop was owned by an army veteran. Who's your, uh, your girlfriend or your baby mama? The lady we just saw. The, the lady we right can here. see. First of all, that's my wife. Okay. Officer Cody Marler stood on the porch, unaware they were about to confront Army veteran Sergeant Syrah Hawkins at his doorstep. Can you go with the what, what's the problem? The cops didn't bother giving the house a second look and kept stirring up trouble. As Sergeant Hawkins was still trying to figure out what was happening, Officer Marler appeared to be in a rush. Y'all violating my rights right now. Which civil right are we violating? Why are you raising your word? Sergeant Hawkins began to feel uneasy about Marler's demeanor, but the officer showed no signs of easing up. Why is he raising his voice? Okay. Are you they threatening welfare me? Check. As tensions escalated, Marler's rage got the better of him as he uttered words that would ultimately weigh heavily against him. First of all, you came to my house and said, is that my girlfriend or my baby mama? No, you can eat it. Hearing those disgraceful comments, Sergeant Hawkins quickly brought out his phone, causing Marler's demeanor to falter immediately. Uh, you told me to eat it, right? That, I, Marler? I messed up. I Not that you want it appeared that Marler recognized his error, yet uncertainly lingered as they were unsure if they were at the correct location. Okay. Did you or did you not tell me to eat it? Moments later, the officers finally faced the truth. Hawkins' wife and their two babies were inside, visibly terrified, sparking a surge of anger within him. Are your children okay? Okay. okay. Do they f look okay, guy? Realizing the gravity of his mistake, Officer Marler faced just criticism and anger, leaving him with no choice but to retreat. I told you I did nine years in the military. That's a Sergeant Hawkins. As Marler exited the house, Hawkins' focus shifted to the female officer, who had maintained a much more respectful demeanor throughout the altercation. Let me explain, because we may have You said you told me to eat it. Finally, the female officer acknowledged their mistake, labeling all of this ordeal a miscommunication. So it may have been a miscommunication between North Bay and our dispatch. The female officer kept going back and forth before leaving the place altogether. However, this wasn't the end of this matter, as Officer Marler was fired from the police department days after the incident. Police Chief Aaron Roth even owned up to the mistake, issuing a sincere apology for his officer's blunder at the wrong address. Despite being fired from his job, Marler was hired by the Willits Police Department on November 17, 2022. But this wasn't the only time a corrupt cop was brought back to his place by his supervisor. This time, the reason was even more alarming. He's 14. Why is he detained? On January 14th, 2021, some Fuqua Varina police officers approached 14-year-old Malcolm Ziegler in response to a call about a stolen dirt bike. Go ahead put your hands back for me, okay? Malcolm did indeed own the bike, having legitimately purchased it from the thief. However, the officers were in no mood to listen to his explanation. Oh my gosh, what did I do? Despite being only 14 years old, the teenager remained composed and attempted to reason with the officer, clearly puzzled by the arrest. Well, can I show you the bill itself from where I bought it? Despite the fact that the boy was just a minor, the cop didn't bother to reach out to his parents and instead proceeded with the arrest. How old are you? Okay. Moments later, a concerned neighbor witnessed the situation and did a huge favor to Malcolm. Hey, can you ring the doorbell and tell my dad to get that bill of sale somewhere in the house? After a while, another neighbor came in trying to help, but it seemed like the officer had already made up his mind. Get, get my dad. He's in the house. Just ring the doorbell. As the officer was busy trying to put him inside the car, one good officer knocked down on his home and summoned his dad, who came out extremely distressed. What is Look. the guy's name to sell you the bike? I think it's like... He only had a brief stay outside as he quickly went back, trying to locate the bill of sale. A few minutes later, Malcolm's dad returned, holding a plethora of documents. But the most important piece of paper was still missing. These are the ones he just filled out okay. because he was going to sell it. Malcolm's patience was wearing thin, and he was finding ways to escape this troubling situation. Do you need the dude's phone number that I bought it from? So I can just, give you his phone. just hold off on that for right now, okay? And we'll move forward then a little bit. Rather than easing tensions and freeing Malcolm from his handcuffs, the officer took an entirely unnecessary course of action. Yeah, yeah, So if you could just go put your legs in for me for a second. All right, you got it. You're almost there. Sorry, but it's uh, not you you. wear like a 14. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this ain't tough for me, man, all right? As he locked him inside, one of the officers who had witnessed everything approached, attempting to reason with his colleague. He's 14. Yes. Okay. So why is he detained? Because that's a stolen... 
The arresting officer wasn't clear with his intentions, and the other officer kept pressing him with more questions. Obviously, he's a juvenile, right? Yeah. Finally, the officer clarified to him that he had made the wrong decision to arrest him. Ain't no sense having him sit in the car tent with handcuffs on. The cop was left with no choice but to rectify his mistake. The officers kept going back and forth with each other until they reached a common ground. But you wouldn't end up following the vision. No, Finally, the supervisor arrived on the scene and wasted no time before passing his judgment on the matter. We're gonna take the handcuffs off. Yeah. Malcolm was finally freed from the handcuffs after his father produced a bill of sale. Malcolm was illegally detained and his family expressed their concerns, demanding that the officer be held accountable and charged for his misconduct. Meanwhile, the Fuquay Varina Police Department claimed that they are pursuing an internal investigation into the case. However, that's not the last time an officer was immediately rectified by his boss. This time, he even did a walk of shame. Hey, Sergeant, maybe you'll learn one day. Thank you. No problem. On March 8th, 2023, an auditor was conducting a First Amendment audit of the Buchan County Courthouse when Sergeant Chris Chessmore approached him. Here's what he had to say to him. Oh, uh, yeah, I do. Can I see that, please? Oh, certainly. The auditor, well aware of his rights, confidently refused to provide any ID, also injecting a hint of humor into the situation. I'm Billy Crack. It was clear that these tactics didn't amuse Sergeant Chessmore. Rather, he seemed to be getting increasingly agitated. Excuse me? Don't touch me. Touch you? you need yeah, to you just did. You just bumped me. Why? For what? What did I do wrong? You were told to leave by me. For what? What crime? Let's go. What crime did I do? I'm here to get papers. The auditor knew his rights and refused to surrender to the sergeant's unlawful orders. This ain't Russia. Seeing the auditor not moving an inch, the sergeant opted to return, this time accompanied by another officer. You work for me. No. You work for the people. Do you live in Buchanan County? It's none of your business. The auditor absolutely owned the sergeant, and just when the other officer attempted to intervene sneakily, he ended up being swiftly shut down. What's so funny, little boy? What's the First Amendment? The auditor wasn't going to be intimidated so easily. Instead, he delivered a stern warning to the officers. You want to be a little tyrant? Hey, get out Get out of the public building. I haven't. Hey, hey, he went up. Yeah, because you're not going to. And if you do, guess what? Well, have fun in court. Once more, the auditor cracked a sudden joke. And predictably, the sergeant didn't seem to appreciate it in the slightest. Not enough testosterone. The sergeant persisted with his questions, prompting the auditor to deliver a much-needed lesson on the First Amendment. Imagine swearing an oath to the Constitution like yet you don't again. know. The sergeant and the auditor engaged in a continuous back-and-forth exchange before the supervisor arrived, at which point the auditor began recounting the events that had transpired. He needs educated. This is disgusting what he's doing. Meanwhile, the young officer tried to assert something, only to be promptly silenced. Is this a, your first day on the job? I mean, come on. Captain. Do you accept this behavior? Finally, the moment of truth arrived, and the captain sided with the auditor, leaving the sergeant feeling defeated. So you have no problem? No. Exactly. But what happens when a junior officer holds a senior officer accountable after they have broken the law? Just like this police chief who learned his lesson. Hello, was that illegal? No, yeah, no, sir. Uh, the reason why we're stopping you is well, because of the wind tent violation. I blinked my blue lights at you to let you know who I was. Yes, sir. Well, we didn't know with it, you know, that's not a government tag. That so is an, that is an unofficial tag. Okay. That, that tag's not even on file. I see, yes. Well, we have to catch up the bill to run it and everything like that, sir. So, so I won't blink my blue lights at you next time. I'll let well, you just sit there. I was just speaking. I'm the police chief in Zebra. Well, nice to meet you, sir. Matt, Matt Polk worked for me. Your I'll chief worked for me. Yes, sir. There's no need to get upset. The chief wasted no time before asserting his authority over the officer. Moments later, a female officer also joined in, but Chief Hemphill made no exceptions to her and continued to act entitled. I'm, I'm upset because I spoke to you when I come by, and now right. you're pulling me sir, over. Sir, I've never met you damn in my life. I understand Where? that. Why are you being hostile? Well, easy. I don't, I don't have to talk to you. Okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm not talking to you. Why are you being hostile right We're, now? Do y'all going to write me a ticket? Are you going to write me a ticket? Sir, we're just trying. I'm the police chief in Do you want to write me a ticket? Why are you coming up to me like that? Me I'm doing my job, right? What, what are you stopping for? I'm stopping for one. You think I'm 10 stars. You I have blue lights, blue lights. In my car. Okay, you know how many uh, officers have blue lights? Are working? you writing me a ticket, yes or no? I'm presenting my Are you writing me a ticket? I'm pissing the lead. Do you have a driver's license? Sure, I have my driver's license. Literally. I don't know why you're pissing the lead. I have my driver's license. I'm going to make it I'm fishing to make it a whole lot more. Your boss worked 11 11. I'm out here with Illinois. Okay. The female officer remained resolute in her duty, claiming that she makes no exceptions to the law. The chief, however, seemed to be too hung up on power and seemed to believe he was above the law. Okay. 
Just for confirming, Bravo Frank Mike 1175 BFM 1175. Yeah, sir, I was explaining. I don't want to hear anything from you. Okay. You let her do her job. 28 returns to a 2001 Dodge Ram truck. The chief was getting angry without any reason, despite the officers maintaining their composure and treating him with respect. He went over to sit in his car, and the officer went back trying to calm him down, but the chief was about to go on another power trip. Yeah. What? She's about bringing your driver's license All back right. up. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, first, when we ran the, the tag, it came back to like a Dodge Ram, so we're just it's confirming not a Dodge it's not. Yes, sir. It's, it's a ghost tag. Yes, sir. We're making sure it's the same back to that tag. Yes, sir. Yeah. We're just. You must have run it wrong. You must have run it wrong because you want to come back to a Dodge so, Ram. We, we were confirmed it. They, they let us know. So, so it's still coming back to a Dodge Ram now? Sir, can, can I ask why you're so uh, upset? Is it still coming back to a Dodge Ram now? No, we, we got it fixed. Why are you so upset? No, you didn't fix it. Did, is it still uh, coming back to a Dodge Ram right now? No, it came back 9 on 5. That's right. Because okay. you run it wrong. Sir. Somebody about, run it wrong. About, Either you did or they did. We're about to get the information. Okay. And get I got your to chief you. on the phone right now. That's yes, fine. That's fine. That's fine. Hemphill then tried to intimidate the officers, claiming that he had their chief on the phone. The officers at this point could do nothing but be shocked by the level of entitlement and ignorance shown by the chief. Oh, please. I appreciate your service. I appreciate okay. your service. All right. I'm just saying, I spoke to you guys. I didn't have to do that. I could have eased on by y'all. I appreciate the job y'all out here doing. Chief, I I'm spoke trying to be to respectful with you. I understand okay? that. I understand I'm not, that. I'm not raising my voice for nothing at you, that. right? I understand All that. right, let's... But Man I'm trying to tell you, the one only okay. thing I'd done wrong was spoke. Y'all never would have pulled me over if I had to flick my blue lights. No, you. sir. No, we were going to pull you up. Actually, I'm no, not going to lie to you. I'm no, telling you, you straight up, okay? Okay. All right. But, like I said, you know, there's Go people out here impersonating police officers with blue lights. Well, you threw my license. She threw my license. If she is getting them for me. She'll bring it to you, sir. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm, I'm just trying to, to get through. I'm trying to talk with you. I don't want to talk anymore about it. All righty. It's very unprofessional. The chief was soon let go, but the incident went viral online, receiving severe criticism across the board. That's when a third-party independent organization was called in to investigate the chief's actions. After the investigation, Jonathan Hempel was given an oral reprimand and was asked to attend post-training related to anger and de-escalation. Well, surprisingly, that's not the only time a police chief was pulled over for a traffic violation. Really? On June 20th, 2023, a Henry County police officer was on his usual patrol route when he observed a person going 96 miles per hour in a 35 miles per hour zone. However, when the officer approached the car, he was in for a surprise. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The officer had pulled over Henry County Sheriff Chief Deputy Michael Yarbrough. The chief gave him his license, and the officer proceeded to go to his police cruiser, where he made an interesting phone call to his friend, recounting the entire incident. Hello? Guess who I just pulled over? Who? Yarbrough. Really? Yeah, the chief deputy driving a Dodge Charger, a souped up Dodge Charger that belongs to the sheriff's office. I just clocked this at 96 in a 35. What was the issue? I mean, why is he speeding? No, no reason. He's in an unmarked car. He just got a high horsepower car and decided he wanted to play. It's your traffic stop. You do what you think you should do. I mean, I, I'm not telling you one way or the other. You do a 96 in a 35. Okay. Well, you know I don't care for him, so I'm going to ride his <laughs> Well, the officer did indeed write him a speeding ticket and handed it to him. Remarkably, the chief owned up to his mistake and didn't try to escalate the situation or leverage his position to evade accountability. Sir, here's your ID back. This is your copy of the citation. 
If you would sign right here, it's got a court date, time it's a must appear. Yes, sir. Please slow down and have a safe day. Yes, sir. After receiving the ticket, Yarbrough was suspended for 40 hours without pay for the severity of the traffic citation. However, every police interaction doesn't go as smoothly as the previous one. Let me tell you something. You guys just slow the damn, your job to slow the traffic down. In June 2018, a cattle farmer, Doug Bailey, was carrying a trailer full of cattle when it suffered multiple flat tires and broke down. In need of assistance, Bailey contacted Lawrence County Sheriff Larry Dean, who dispatched two deputies to help the farmer. As the deputies were arriving, Bailey also flagged down a Georgia State Patrol trooper to help manage traffic around the trailer. Some hours after the incident, Sheriff Dean contacted his deputies only to find out that the state trooper wouldn't let them move the cattle. Agitated by this, the sheriff personally arrived at the scene and directly confronted the state trooper. The first one here says this is my son. Okay. All right, I'll call but my no, this is my county and this is my damn. I you may be your interstate. You can call your damn son. Okay. You can take your ass back and watch the TV as far as I'm concerned. Well, there's well, the safest way that well, I know. Well, so you, you, the best that you know how. This my men are just way. as capable of doing it as they do. There ain't, ain't no way no cattle can get out of here. But let me tell you something. You go to slow the damn, your job to slow the traffic down. The farmer later explained how hot it was, and it was being really difficult for the cattle to be in this condition. The sheriff's anger wasn't coming down, as he continued to fume at the trooper. There ain't no difference in backing that trailer up. There ain't no difference in bringing a damn wrecker out here and got to turn around. There's no way these cattle could have got back on this interstate. These men out here, these cattle laid out and die, somebody's gonna be responsible for them. I understand that. All, all these lives from down there stay right here. That's right. All these lives, they're, we're not gonna, they're not on you. They they're on, on me. Things. They on me, me and this man right here. If I say for them to unload them cows, somebody has a cow. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If I want to unload the cattle, I'll unload them on that damn trailer right now. Hey, Sheriff. Give me a portion. Can I talk with you for a second? That's all right. I'm telling you. Y'all done got these damn cattle off the building today. Well, the trooper did stay calm and silently listened to what the sheriff said to him. Moments later, the sheriff started talking to his deputies in an attempt to help the farmer remove his cattle. The trailer's been broken down for about two hours. They wanted to upload all these cows right here on the shore of the interstate and try to load them in that trailer over there. Sheriff, I told them no. I said, we got a record coming. We got somebody coming to jack up and get spare tires on. The sheriff called his sergeant, told his sergeant to come out here and tell him to unload them. The sergeant came out here and told his deputies to unload them. I said no. I said, I've already called my corporal. What are you doing? As the sheriff got to the scene, the state trooper started to get away. He also called his supervisor to complain about what was happening. Eventually, the situation did calm down, and Bailey was able to get his cattle back to his farm. However, five of his cows died the next morning from heat and stress, resulting in a loss of $3,000 for him. Sheriff Dean, on the other hand, claimed that he met with the state trooper and apologized about the entire incident and the language he used. The actions of the sheriff hails out in front of the confrontation these two police officers had between them. Shut your mouth! You don't talk to me like that! I'm not your boy! Talk to you, boy! You are Thank you. On June 24, 2022, Sergeant James from the Hiawassee Police Department was out patrolling when he saw a driver speeding and driving recklessly. Soon, the sergeant activated his sirens and pulled the guy over. Good evening. How are you doing? Doing well in yourself? I'm doing all right. What's your hurry? 
You're very recklessly from the city all the way here, man. In and out of traffic, not using right. turn signal. Man, I watched you. It took me this long to catch up to you. I'm sorry. You were 70 plus. I didn't think I was up. I checked you at 65. I'm sorry. What's your hurry? I just, I got to get my medication. You gonna drive, try to kill people over no, medication? No, well, it helps with my anxiety. If that car in front of you would have slammed on brakes, you would have caused a wreck right here. The sergeant asked for the driver's ID as he proceeded to question him about his medical condition. What kind of medication is it? It's uh, for bipolar and, and anxiety. Okay, I don't think that medicine would make you drive the way you were driving. No, because it's starting to wear off. I was expecting it to be home. It's starting to wear off? Yeah. How many times a day you take it? One when I eat breakfast, I take one at 9 o'clock, one at 2 o'clock, and then one at, in the evening. And it's, it's starting to wear off. I can feel my head starting to Well, the way you were driving, you didn't have to fly. I'm taking the medicine. Well, maybe you don't need to be driving at all. No, I'm on my medication. Well, why don't you take your medication with you? Because I expect it to be home. Hang tight. The sergeant returned to his police cruiser, where he wrote a speeding ticket and went over to give it to the driver. However, just as he was about to leave the scene, Sheriff Ken Henderson attempted to talk to the driver, thus purposely interfering with his traffic stop. Agitated by this, the sergeant went over to confront him, leading to a massive brawl. driving or any of that. I wrote you for speed, just like I told you, 65 and a 45. I did put what you say and what I observed, okay? okay. Your court date is August 8th. All right, watch coming through town like that, man. Oh, yeah, Traffic's sorry. heavy, okay? All right, be careful. Sir, got a question. There's one four people uh, come on on Inside the city or out here? Uh, just right here. Okay. Uh, uh, so go pull the video at Valero. You get on my traffic stop again, I will arrest I'll, you. Yeah, I'll arrest you right now. Do it, buddy. And we're going to do it. Charges do it. Your do it, at. Do it, Oak. Go it. Go for it. Do it. There's cameras at Valero and there's cameras at Napa that see you pulled out. Shut your mouth. You don't talk to me like that. I'm not your boy. Talk to you, boy. You Thank you. Thank you, sir. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. This heated exchange clearly shows a rift between the police department and the sheriff's office. Soon after the incident, the Hiawassee police chief apologized for the incident, noting that the department would continue to work for the public. As of now, there haven't been any internal investigations into the matter, and none of the officers have been confronted about this. And this time, we have a police officer going head to head with a security official. Shut the hell up. You're not getting what? front of the line pass. You accused us of. And why don't you want to talk now to Now you're not. In August 2022, YouTuber Benjamin, more commonly known by the name Lofe, visited the Valley Fair Amusement Park in Shakopee, Minnesota, alongside another YouTuber to do some pranks and make content for his next video. Everything was going perfectly before he went over to confront a lady who he claimed had cut the line to a ride. She's cutting in line. Why'd you cut the line? Huh? Why'd you cut the line? I'm talking to my cousin. No, I'm you, not going on a ride. No, I watched you though. You cut the whole line. I'm talking the, to my cousin. All these people are waiting for their kids to get off. They're not in line. No, but I've been waiting this whole time. This you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't get on here anyway. You're too tall. What are you talking about? Yes, I can. Okay. You can't get on this ride. You're too tall. Are you discriminating against me because I'm tall? Hey, this dude. You know you do? I mean, you can ask him, but he's not going to let you have a ride. You're too tall. No, but some of us are waiting and like out there all day and she just cut the line. You say I'm discriminating. All of these, so cousins, all of these parents are waiting for their kids to get off the ride. None of them are waiting to get None on the ride. None of them are waiting to get on the ride. There is no YouTube line. No. The two ladies didn't seem to enjoy the YouTuber's prank and went over to complain about this to the security. However, what Lofe didn't expect was that the lady would go on to falsely accuse them of assault. We were in uh, the kids area recently. Uh, the kids area? We had a description of you know, two white guys and a black guy. The, I'm half white. I'm sure the victim didn't really take it off. The I victim? Too. It was sexual about? assault. 
professional. What? They Stop. said, uh, yeah, you guys grabbed her. You had a camera. That's why I'm thinking that camera. Huh? We yeah. grabbed her? Whoa, whoa. Who? We're going to go take you guys back so she can see if she can identify you. And then we got SPD coming too. So whoa. we're just going to. Uh, what are you talking? Who did we grab? I just got the report. So uh, just, this just got this just got blew way out of proportion, yo. Grab. Out of proportion. Were you there? Talk about sexual. Who did we grab? We don't even did know you? what you're. We don't even okay. know who you're that's talking about. That's fun. You fit the description. Are you a cop? No, I'm not a cop. All right, I'm leaving. Suddenly, the mood started to shift for the YouTubers, as they had not done anything like that. The security official even alerted the cops who were on their way, and both of them were escorted out of the park. Fine, we're not we're not even, yeah, we're not so we'll even. leave the park then. I'm not staying here with people like accusing us of. So what did we do? We're gonna bring you up to the front, and then we get the person to come see if they can identify you. Yeah, she grabbed, dude. She touched so now, us. So now you were there. You just said you didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, we we were there. We didn't grab anybody. It's all on camera. Detective, dude, why are you so mad? Because you're walking away from me. You yeah. guys just admitted you were there. We're not under arrest, so I don't need to listen to you. We didn't do anything. We didn't do. Oh, we literally have it all on video. Okay, well then you have nothing to worry about. What? what you want to do is have a small talk. I'm asking you a question. What are you doing? Why is there three of them? You guys brought out the whole Avengers for this. So, come over here in the security office. Why don't we not? Well, if you're innocent, then I'll tell you what. Why don't we not? Oh, you're not getting what? front of the line pass. You accused us of assault. Then why don't you want to talk now to you're Now you're not. Now you're going to apologize. Bro? This is private property. That's okay, that's oh, okay. I'll step up. You're literally that's harassing us. Weapons of your kind. You I don't give you bring? Uh, she was, she was, she was, oh my she god. She said three people so assaulted her. There is no way. Get, get, get out of here. Shortly after, all three of them are escorted out of the park. An officer from the Shakopee Police Department arrives onto the scene and starts investigating the matter. Both of the YouTubers appear visibly frustrated at this point as they were unfairly targeted by the accusation. Hang out a second. So anything a problem? Yeah. So what's going on today? They walked up and accused us of all we have the whole thing on camera we didn't do anything okay. and i don't know much i'm just trying to look into it trying to get both sides of the story too you're worried about recording everything's recording right here as well are we under arrest or no, we're just being so we can leave that we can leave then being detained really free to look into something if you okay. want to get rough like that i'm not getting i'm like, not getting yeah, rough you have an idea with you yeah break it out why are we being detained we're looking into something right now. i don't think we committed a crime for us to be asked okay. questions for yeah. our ids and so are, are we yeah. free to go? Well, then you can go to jail if you'd like, if you're not going to identify yourself. It's I'll simple. identify myself, but like, okay. I'm confused. I don't have any idea. Difficult, that's fine. We can do that. I'm not trying okay. to be difficult. I'm really not. Okay. The officer appeared tough and didn't give them any leverage whatsoever. At this point, both of them found themselves detained, despite not having committed any crime whatsoever. I'm genuinely like, confused at what situation, because like, we walked up and talked to somebody that was waiting for a ride. That's the only thing I can think of. We didn't touch anybody. We have it all on camera. We didn't touch anybody. So much about touching. What's this we've got? Because he said that we touched somebody and we assaulted them. That's what he, the head of security said. And we did not put hands on anybody. Again, I'm coming into this mm -hmm. at the end here, trying mm -hmm. to sort it out and figure out all what's Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Not trying to accuse anybody of anything, but I'm merely going off of what I'm told. I'm okay. glad you didn't even say the words and stuff, but that that other guy, the way he approaches, was just not. It was not. Okay. It was not okay. So in your guys' eyes, nothing happened. No. Nothing. How about him? I know he's got earbuds in and he's deaf. He allegedly, you said. Can we get your attention? Is he really deaf or is he just playing that? He's like partially deaf. It's hard for him to hear. It's what he said. I was like, it's not an inconvenience. It's literally like a big deal. You, you don't accuse someone. Cause like, look at look at where this led us. Like, they called you guys and like, yeah, you, yeah. Actually, you got more important. Talk to this gentleman here for a second. You guys. He wasn't even there. I don't even yeah. know what he. <laughs> he's relaying information. All right, just be patient. Dude, he's crazy. he's like smiling. Guys, I hope I don't go to jail. Moments later, another cop arrived on the scene, and surprisingly, the moment of truth came out as both of them were cleared of any criminal activity. Why are we no, still here? Are you guys are being detained yes. for an investigation right now. It's simple as that. Okay, so Valley Fair needs to do their thing, whatever they want to do with them, and then they're good. There's nothing criminal for us, so do your thing, whatever you need hey, to do. Hey, I want a one-year pass. I want a one-year free pass, bro. <laughs> wow. I want a one-year free pass bro. on everything I love, on baby. Y'all not finna false ac accuse oh, us of Salt, and then we're not getting a free pass, bro. I had to call my lawyer over this shit, and I'm I'm pissed off. So who are you mad at? I'm mad at dumb. Not y'all. Y'all doing y'all job. Which which? Well, I'm mad at security. Sure. I was we just in this? jail, man. So well, I wasn't trying to go yeah, back. And we're not like I said. That's why we were hanging out, waiting to figure out what happened, and then we don't put people in jail that don't deserve to go to jail. You're a good guy. So we we have to chat. Can I can I give you a hug? No, this is my homie right here. 
676,000 subscribers. I gotta get you a shirt, bro. Just I'm just starting up, so I can do Bro, do you, need to, you need to stop talking. As both of them were cleared of any misconduct, which they clearly never did in the first place, the park still had the audacity to trespass them. Add it to the list, man. I don't care about being trespassed, bro. I'm not coming back here. Yeah, so this has the worst like customer path. service and security I've ever seen. Appreciate you for really doing your job. You're yeah. fair on both sides. It's bigger than black and white, so I understand that you, you oh, are aware definitely. of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a... It's bigger than black and white. Bigger than black and white. I'll no, give no, you knuckles. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta I don't go know. Like, oh, you can just do that then. Yeah, just fist. There, there you go. Bigger than black and white. He doesn't think so, uh, though. Well, do you guys have paperwork for him or what do you Oh, we got it. Oh, so he's. So we're just going to print something off for you. It's just going to be the trespass form. All right. Okay. Are we required to sign that? I don't no. think we do. Can I take back, a picture with you guys? Or if I do come back. That would be a cult picture for Instagram. He's got to be in it, too. He's, yeah, they, they seem like the guys that didn't pass the police academy. I for them, but. Like, you know that failed the police academy. Sir. Hell yeah. Speaking of black and white guys. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I got a paperwork for you. Trespass for a year. All right, add Trespass it to the list. For a year. Trespass you. for a year. All right, you guys. For us, guys. Nah, that's it for okay. me. Nothing criminal. Nothing criminal. You Appreciate you guys. I told you security, whatever his name was. I bet. Thank you, man. Thank you. Have a good rest yeah, of the day. Yeah, you have a good right? one. I know you're not deaf. You know what, honestly, though? I would have been disappointed if we left there without a trespass. Like, this is a badge of honor right yeah, here. Yeah, for real. Like, well, the officers managed to handle the situation perfectly as the park issued all three of them one year trespassing notice. All of them proceeded to depart the park and went on with their day. As of today, Benjamin hasn't pursued any legal action against the security officials, and we haven't heard anything from the Valley Fair amusement park either. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. Today, we saw instances where corrupt police officers were held accountable by their honorable counterparts. This demonstrates that there are indeed good cops within these institutions, committed to upholding the law and ensuring that their colleagues do the same. I believe these officers did an excellent job by following the law and refusing to show leniency to their fellow officers. If you agree with me, please consider showing your support by liking this video and make sure to subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.